Hola, Minasan! Welcome back for another round of tabletop gaming. Or deck building. I'm still working on that. I'm still working on that. <laughs> uh, today, today I'm covering um, what was, um, what is my, what was, uh, what is, I wouldn't say originally, but is the second uh, commander deck I ever built, and that's Silvo's uh, Rogue Elemental. Um, it's going to undergo an evolutionary change. Uh, it changed a lot the last time that I covered it. That was like four or five months ago, if I remember correctly. But uh, a lot has changed, and Silvo's uh, got uh, another play run um, over the weekend, uh, this past weekend, uh, and it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm still missing a lot of parts, a lot of key parts, and... I gotta get my hands on those because if I could get my hands on those, then the way that I want it to run will be good. Uh, it, 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 it's running. That's the important thing is that it is running, and that's a good thing because if it's not running, uh, then we got problems. <laughs> but um, um, there's not much for me. Well, actually, there is a lot for me to explain. I gotta explain a lot of stuff with this deck. Because uh, Silvos was a very straightforward um, beast, uh, beast deck, and it's still a beast deck, but it's I put in a lot of parts in it, a lot of interesting parts, and it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a wild ride when you see when you realize what I'm trying to do, um, <laughs> what I'm trying to do. So let's not uh, let's not waste too much time and let's get on to the to the tabletop. So let's do the walkthrough first. So as you can see, I got Silvo's Rogue Elemental, uh, three mana, uh, three green, uh, Trample for one green uh, can regenerate Silvo's Rogue Elemental. He's an eight five, uh, element uh, legendary ele elemental. That's the, our commander. Very straightforward, very quick, very simple. Of course, we have uh, land, lots and lots of land. Um, this is very uh, unique for a um, mono color deck because of the fact that um, it's mono green. There's not a lot of, well, while there are mana rocks, um, being that this is mono green, cards like Arcane Signet and and Commander, Sp uh, Commander Sphere, is, uh, as well as Command Tower, they're not really, um, really worth putting into a mono deck because you only need one color. And I'm operating with uh, 34 forests. I might not need all these forests. Uh, I'm sure um, I could find some, say, uh, land, you know, that does um, a, a generic mana, colorless mana, that provides colorless mana, but with extra effects to it. Um, I haven't uh, looked into that yet. Uh, I only put three uh, particular lands in, uh, and those lands happens to be the famed... Urzatron. <gasps> Urzatron. Urzatron. <laughs> so, yeah, I threw in the Urzatron cards here. Uh, given the, the sheer size uh, of um, cost of generic mana, so to help deal with that cost, it's a very difficult card to come out. But given the way this deck runs, um, these cards will probably come out a lot faster than I would expect, um, than, than it would normal. But that's if I can get the part, the, the, the important parts that I need. And we'll go to Scryfall for that one. But um, what's very interesting about um, the Urza cards uh, is that they, the, their land type, uh, their land type in now present day um, reprints has it saying Urza's power plant as a type. Urza being that's the name of a character in Magic Gathering is now treated as a card type. Um, for the specific use of these three uh, particular cards. Um, basically, uh, Urza's Power Plant, uh, when you tap, you get to add one colorless mana to your mana pool. And if you control Urza's Mind, Urza's Power Plant, and Urza's Tower, you add two colorless mana uh, to your mana pool instead of one for this particular card. So it doubles up the number of mana if you have all the parts. Then you have Urza's Mind. Uh, where if you tap, you also add um, one colorless mana to your mana pool. And if you control the, the mine, the power plant, and the tower, you get to add two colorless mana to your mana pool instead of one. 
And finally, um, I finally got the dang car, and that's the uh, um, the tower. Uh, Urza's tower. Once again, you tap uh, to get one colorless mana, and if you control the mind, the plant, and the tower, this one gives you three colorless mana instead of one. So overall, when you tap all four, you get seven mana, uh, seven generic mana, and that's uh, very important for this uh, particular deck because generic mana is extraordinarily expensive uh, here. As you can see, starting with Crozen Beast, uh, it's three generic mana, one green, uh, Squirrel Beast. It's got Threshold uh, from the Odyssey set. Uh, Crozen Beast gets plus seven, plus seven. So the way Threshold works is uh, you have Threshold as long as seven or more cards are in your graveyard. So if I have seven cards, um, this one one creature becomes an eight eight uh, Squirrel Beast. If you have a Squirrel deck, Throw that in there. <laughs> Make sure you have that if you have squirrel decks. Uh, next up is the Snarling Undorak. Uh, two mana and two green. Uh, uh, his ability is two mana and one green. Uh, target beast gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So you could tap multiple, multiple, multiple times. It also has the morph ability. So the way morph works is that you could play this uh, card face down as a two, two uh, creature for uh, three generic mana. And if you pay the morph cost, you can flip it face up. This, I believe, is considered a special action. It cannot be responded to at, um, at all, uh, as per the, the rules for special actions. Um, this was a response to Yu-Gi-Oh, quite honestly. When, this first, when morph came out, the first thing that came to my mind was Yu-Gi-Oh, because in Yu-Gi-Oh, you could play your cards face down, and then they would flip face up whenever they get attacked, or if you want to do it at will. So this was basically magic playing... Um, playing, uh, uh, we are afraid of Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon, so therefore we're going to copy Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon in our sets type of situation. Uh, next up is Histrodon. It's got, uh, um, it's a, it costs four mana and a, and, a, and a green to cast. It's got Trample. Whenever Histrodon deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, and it also has Morph uh, for uh, one mana, uh, for one generic and two, uh, two green. So... This is actually a pretty good card. Um, if you get the right pump in, the the right power boost, uh, you could uh, and and get that nice clean hit, especially with that trample damage. You get to draw a card easily. Card drawing with green is a very difficult thing to pull off. So any uh, any chance you could uh, draw a card, um, whether it's uh, through enchantments or or um, punching somebody, you want to make sure they're in there. The berserk Merlodont. Uh, whenever a beast becomes blocked, it gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each creature blocking it. Um, I, if I remember correctly, this is kind of like a um, uh, an alternate version of Rampage because it says, um, oh no no no, um, this is like a pumped up flanking for each uh, creature blocking it, uh, and this is for any beast. So if uh, someone decides to block with two creatures, you get plus two plus two. Three creatures, plus three, plus three, and so on. So, yeah. Um, you, uh, and it's for any beast on top of that. So, basically, your beasts are <laughs> uh, are dangerous. Uh, this is one of my uh, first uh, beasts that I got my hands on from the Jumpstart uh, sets a um, couple, of, couple of months back when I got back into Magic uh, early... Uh, uh, back in late summer. Sylvan Brush Strider. When uh, Brush Strider enters the battlefield, you gain two life. Very straightforward, very simple. Very cheap to cost. It's only um, uh, two, two generic and a green to, to play for a 3-2 creature. Um, two life might not be much, but it doesn't hurt um, to, you know, at least get a spare two uh, to help out, especially in the early stages, and you can be able to cast easily uh, when you have some mana. Uh, get a nice little two to hit cushion it. Needle shot Gurna. Uh, now again to the expensive part here. This one caused uh, four generic mana and two green to cast. Uh, Needle shot Gurna may block as though it had flying. Basically, its reach is a three six creature. Its toughness is six. So if you can uh, pump this up very much, um, yeah, you'll be you'll have a nice um, uh, unblockable. And this is very good too for beasts because beasts don't really fly much. So having some uh, having a beast with reach um, really helps out. Very good, uh, very good defensive measure. Next up is the Leary Fog Beast. 
Uh, whenever the Fog Beast becomes blocked, prevent all combat damage that will be dealt this turn. So again, this is another um, another anti-block type of thing. Um, this one protects its own self. It doesn't, uh, unlike um, uh, unlike Merlodon, uh, was it Merlodon? Uh, anyway, unlike the other creature, uh, <laughs> uh, this one uh, comes out uh, protecting itself. So he's basically a literal wall. So your opponent's got to find a way to get around it. Uh, two mana and a green uh, for uh, to cast. Very cheap, very quick. And you get a 4-2 creature. And it's not bad. It's a 4-2 creature on top of that for three mana. That's a that's an excellent cost. That's a that's a cheap one. Karnasid. I've been in and out with this one. But uh, for uh, four generic and two green, you get a trampler. And on uh, one generic and a green, you can regenerate Karnasid. 5-4 creature. Um, bring it back into, into play with regeneration. Uh, very straightforward, very powerful. A lot of these beasts, uh, what, um, what I like about the beasts is that they're very straightforward and they're very powerful. There's no complex stuff, you know, just direct. The giant warhog, it's getting more expensive. Uh, five generic and a green, you get a trampler, five five. Again, straightforward, simple. Bam, hits you with a five five trampler. <coughs> mm. Next up is the Spirit Breaker uh, Behemoth, five generic and two green. He is indestructible, a very indestructible beast. And for one generic mana, target creature with power five or greater gains indestructible until end of turn. So what does that mean? Oh, very simple. Look, I have a giant warhog with a, a five five trampler. I give him indestructible. <laughs> oh, you can't kill him off. <laughs> You can't kill them off. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty uh, insane. Uh, but as you can see, the cost is getting higher on the generic side. It's five, um, five mana, uh, five generic mana. Next up is uh, Nylea's Forerunner. Uh, Nylea's uh, Forerunner it costs four, um, four generic and a green. You get Trample, and other creatures you control have Trample. So not just only Beast, but any other creature type that I might have will also gain Trample. And that's pretty scary. That's pretty scary and pretty uh, frightening. Um, it's Primal Rage all, uh, all wrapped up. And it's a 5-3 creature, so um, it's uh, it could be easy to block unless uh, you get the right type of um, growth. Uh, this one is the Adaptive Snapjaw um, for, uh, for Generic and a, and a Green. It has an ability called Evolve. So what Evolve does is whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, if that creature has greater power or toughness, or toughness, then this creature put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. Now, if you notice, its uh, its power is six and its toughness is two. That means that um, if I have any, if I play any creature with toughness greater than two, um, it's going to get plus one plus one easily. Now this is an or. It's not an and. So it all depends on um, who comes in. Um, <clears throat> who comes in so like say um, the creature um, one of my creatures that is um, let's say the Gurna I play the Gurna which is a 3-6 creature um, the 3 won't cover the 6 uh, power the 3 power won't cover the 6 but the 6 toughness will cover the 2 and I'll get a plus 1 plus 1 counter on that so a great way to get a pump going uh, we got here the uh, Rampaging Baloths, as you can see, um, it, they're getting tougher and tougher now. They're getting scarier and scarier, huh? 6-6 six, six, uh, um, Trampler uh, for 4 generic mana and two, uh, 2 green to cast. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 4-4 four, four green beast creature token. So every time I play a land, I get a beast creature. Uh, and be lucky it doesn't give, uh, give me Trample. <laughs> 4-4 four, four beast creature. They're getting bigger. Here's another big one. <laughs> this one is straightforward and simple. The enormous Bela, the 7-7 seven, seven creature for 6 generic and a, and a, and a green. Uh, not bad for a 7-7 seven, seven creature. It's uh, equal cost. You know, its cost is equal to uh, the 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, very straightforward. Very frightening. Uh, just give it trample. <laughs> and here's another big one. Uh, this one... Um, uh, uh, you need to keep note of this because I'll explain to you how this deck is going to run. Uh, Garruk's Horde, uh, five generic and two green, trample. You play with the top card of your library revealed. That's a very weird thing to have for, um, for a card. 
you'll understand why. Uh, you may cast the top card of your library if it's a creature card. Do this only anytime you could cast this uh, that creature card. Uh, you still have to pay the, the spell's cost. So I believe it's sorcery speed, if I'm reading that correctly. It should have been very explicit. But it is saying that I do this only anytime I could cast the, that creature card. So it could be uh, instant. It could be an instant. So I'll need to get some rulings on that one. But nevertheless, uh, keep track of the fact that you played the card um, uh, that I could play with the, the top card of my library revealed. Um, you'll see uh, soon enough down the, um, uh, uh, during this walkthrough. <clears throat> and next up is Terra Stomper. Uh, it's gotten bigger. We're talking eight eight uh, for three generic and three green. Uh, I got uh, Terra Stomper can't be countered. Sorry, blue. Sorry, blue. You can't counter. <laughs> it has trample straight up eight eight. That's it. So it can't be countered when I cast it, and uh, and I got an 8-8 eight, eight Trampler for 6 mana total. 3 generic and 3 green. That is an excellent card to have. If you're doing a beast deck, get your hands on a Terra Stomper. It is perfect. Next up is the Colonian Behemoth. <gasps> it's gotten bigger. It's 9-9. Nine, nine. It's got Shroud, so this creature can't be the target of spells or abilities. Uh, 5 generic mana and 2 green. Oh my gosh, it's coming right at you. It's coming right at you. <laughs> so, yeah, it, um, yeah, for, uh, no abilities or spells will be able to stop it. And here's a classic from the days of yore. It's the Crows and Colossus. Another 9-9. Nine, nine. This one has a very high morph cost. Not really worth it because it's um, its own um, mana cost. Its casting cost is 6 generic and 3 green. The, the morph cost is 6 generic and 2 green, so you're only cutting off 1. So it's kind of pointless. I mean, it's a nice feint and everything for morph, but it's not really worth uh, spending 8. Just spend the extra 1 and you got a 9-9. Nine, nine. It doesn't have anything else, no trample, no nothing. So you're going to have to um, get some uh, buffs on there if you want to really make him a terrorizing thing. But other than that, it's a good blocker. It makes for a good blocker. Uh, next up... Uh, it's the Nyxborn Behemoth. Um, I did use this uh, card in my Sithis deck, but the cost was just too high, and I needed a little bit more speed. Um, so I brought it back. Uh, so I brought it over here to the Beast deck. Uh, Nyxborn Behemoth, ten generic mana. Now you understand why I have Urzatron. <laughs> uh, ten generic mana, two green to cast. Um, now it has the ability, being an enchantment uh, creature. That this spell caused um, X less to cast, where X is the total number, uh, total mana value of non-creature enchantments uh, you control, which is not a problem with this deck. However, if I get in the early run, yeah, I'm gonna want that Urzatron early, uh, so I could cover that ten generic mana cost. It's a Trampler, for one, uh, for one mana and a green. Uh, I sacrifice another enchantment, and the Behemoth gains indestructible until end of turn. Ten ten. It's a ten ten Trampler, so. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's a beast. It's a beast. But thankfully, I have plenty enough enchantments to uh, to um, do the costing. Um, but if I get it too early, yeah, I'm in I'm in big trouble. And finally, <gasps> the crows and colossus. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> um, this is a uh, this is seven seven generic and three green, at the beginning of your upkeep. A sacrifice Crows and Colossus unless you pay two green. So I gotta pay two green on the upkeep, which won't be much of a problem being that it is a green deck. Um, there's mana rocks everywhere. It has the morph ability. Uh, again, just like um, the Crows and Colossus, it's not really worth doing the morph because it's just one mana cheaper. Uh, seven, uh, seven generic and two green. Uh, that's just one cost less. And you got a 13 13. The only thing that's shocking is that it doesn't have reach to reflect this, its sheer size. I mean, just look how big that thing is. Uh, it should have had reach. It should have had reach, quite honestly. It's very weird having something that big and no reach. <laughs> All right. And now we come to the elves. The elven yells. The elven days. Um, we got our resident uh, mana dork, Lana War Elf, at uh, tap to add green. Uh, what's funny is that this uh, says this ability is played as an interrupt. That's very funny in the old days. <laughs> now it's just a, a, a mana source, a mana ability. So don't ha it's even faster than uh, than anything. <laughs> then uh, we got the Perius Perfect. 
uh, elf warrior. Other elves you control get plus one plus one uh, green in the tap, and you create a one one green elf warrior creature token, which is pretty frightening. Uh, two mana and a tap uh, to cast. Another two mana and a tap uh, and a green uh, to cast is the Thin Horn Elder. Uh, you tap it and you get two green mana uh, to your mana pool. So now this one here does say uh, play this ability as a mana source. So you're gonna see. That, so there's a lot of that with the mana dorks nowadays. They, they'll say that they're mana source or they're considered a mana ability at this point. The fastest speed in, uh, in Magic. <clears throat> Lana War Tribe, uh, just three green. And you could tap it to add three green. A very excellent card to have in your green, uh, um, in your green deck, especially if you're green intensive, green heavy. Very excellent. And another one that is excellent for uh, green intensive um, decks is the Canopy Tactician, uh, three mana and a green. Other uh, elves you control get plus one plus one, which is crazy. Like the the perfect, the pair is perfect. And if you tap, you get to add three green. So yeah. Um, plenty of mana dorks to go around and really um, um, good mana dorks to really cover those high costs of, um, uh, of the beasts that's going on there. Then we got the Ivy Lane Denison. Uh, whenever another green creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on a target uh, creature. Uh, and this is an enters the battlefield so it doesn't matter how it gets in. So um, Cards uh, like the, the elves that can create 1-1 one, one elf uh, token creatures and that one uh, beast that can create a beast token creature, uh, they enter the battlefield and I get to put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature. Uh, next up is the wood elves. Uh, when they come into play, uh, search your library for a forest card and put that um, uh, forest into play untapped. Keyword there, untapped. It doesn't come into play tapped, it comes into play untapped and that's a big deal because that gives you um, a quick mana source right then and there uh, two mana and a green to cast uh, one one be sure to shuffle your library after your search uh, next up is the Lana War visionary two mana and a green uh, when it enters the battlefield you draw a card perfect instant card draw and you just get to add one uh, and on the tap you get to add one green so you got a mana dork going here this one was a cool one. Uh, this was a new thing that I discovered when I uh, got into uh, when uh, when I came back to Magic. It's called Level Up. This is the Draga Tree Speaker, just one green. Uh, it starts off as a one-one creature, and what Level Up does is that if I pay uh, one mana and a green, I put a level counter on this. Uh, it uh, it's a uh, sorcery speed. And what happens is, is that you got these levels here on the side. This one says levels one through four, and this one says five plus. So what happens is that um, when I put the first counter on there, I have access to this ability, uh, which is tap add green, uh, two green to your mana pool. And it's a one, two creature at that point. And if I build it up to five and add more to it, um, then all the elves I control um, gains the ability to tap and add two green to the mana pool. And this uh, and tree speaker becomes a one, four creature. This was very fascinating, uh, a very excellent mana dork. Uh, and you gotta pay, uh, and all you gotta do is pay two mana, uh, one uh, one generic and one green to level up. So uh, it'll take five turns to do it, um, um, unless of course you have plenty enough mana because this is an ability, uh, as you can see by the colon on the side here. So if you have plenty enough mana, like 10 mana, just spot it all up and now you got um, you got tapping creatures. Here's another one that you're gonna to need to pay attention to. And remember, uh, just like the Garuk's Horde, this is the Cursor of Crufix. Uh, one mana and two green to cast. You play with the top card of your library revealed. You may play lands from the top of your library. Landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life. So, you know, quick one lifer. Plenty, uh, it's, a, it's a landfall, so that's pretty good. But um, you're gonna see the strategy soon enough uh, because I'm looking for more like this and Garuk's Horde, where um, I get the top card revealed and I can play off the top of it. And this, uh, and you'll see the ones that I'm looking for. Time for the enchantments and spells. Um, spider Sick Armor, uh, two mana and a green. Creatures you control get plus zero, plus one, and may block as though they have flying, so that's reach. So uh, pretty good defensive uh, card. Uh, makes all of, uh, all of my uh, beasts uh, reachable. Uh, including the 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 sky uh, the cloud scraper. Then I have Garuk's Uprising, two mana and a green. 
um, a, a perfect replacement for Primal Rage, but I still do recommend Primal Rage because um, it's uh, one mana cheaper, but it just doesn't come with these extra abilities. So if you get the chance at Grook's uh, Uprising, um, if it's not expensive, get it. If it's too expensive, go for the more cheaper Primal Rage. You still get all creatures you control, um, half trample. Um, so when Grook's Uprising, uh, which is a battlefield, if you control a creature with power four, or greater draw a card which is not a problem because I got a lot of um, beasts that are power 4 or greater uh, creatures I control have trample and whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under my control draw a card so again um, uh, again I get the uh, card draws with each drop uh, of a creature and mind you that this is an enters the battlefield ability and I do have a creature that generates 4-4 four, four beasts uh, tokens um, beast tokens so, yeah, <laughs> I will be drawing a card a lot with that <laughs> combination. Uh, here's the next enchantment uh, for two, uh, two and a green. Uh, each uh, creature you control, this is retaliation. Each creature you control gains. Whenever a creature blocks it, this creature gets plus one, plus one until the end of the turn. So same, uh, similar to the other um, beast creature, um, basically, if, uh, if any of my um, beasts get blocked, they get plus one, plus one. Um, but uh, unlike the, um, the, the other beast, um, this one here is just uh, one creature. So if multiple creatures block it. Uh, oh, I think it does the same thing. Yeah, that's right. Um, scratch that, scratch that. <laughs> and familiar ground, another defensive measure um, for two in a green to cast. Each uh, creature you control cannot be blocked by more than one creature. Yeah, <laughs> menace. Uh, well, no, it's not even menace. It's a reverse menace. Uh, yeah, it's a reverse menace. So, oh, you're gonna block me with two creatures? No, you can't do that. You gotta block with, uh, block me with one creature, and I have retaliation. So my my one creature you're blocking uh, is a plus one plus one. <laughs> And now we're coming to what is the meat and potatoes of what this deck is going to do. This is Rowan. For two and two green, uh, you reveal the first card you draw each turn. Whenever you reveal a basic land card this way, you draw a card. So uh, so when I draw the card, I have to, I reveal it. And if it's, um, and if it's a basic uh, land card, I get an extra card. If not, um, I still get to keep the card in my hand, but I won't get the extra draw. So, what does that mean? Well, the, the cards face up, um, I already know <laughs> that I got a land coming and I could draw two cards um, outright. Um, it's, it, this is kind of like a trick deck, basically. It's a little trick deck. Uh, here's um, Elven Chorus for three in a green and one green. Uh, you may look at the top card of your library anytime, anytime. Uh, you may cast creatures uh, spells from the top of your library, which again it's a cast, so it's um, so it's the uh, normal speed. Uh, creatures you control have uh, tap at one mana of any color, which is great for rainbow decks. You know, if you're playing rainbow decks or three or four color decks, uh, mono green uh, is not very much. But the key thing is this, uh, is those two abilities because of um, what I'm uh, because I'm trying to make this a trick deck here where I can look at the top card and I can cast creature spells. So uh, if you notice, it's saying you may look at the top card. If you've, uh, if you've noticed too, um, Cursor of Crucifix and Groups Uprising saying that I have the card revealed. So what does that mean? Well, well, <laughs> with the card revealed, I know exactly what that card is. And since I have a choice, particularly with this one here, it says you may look at the top card of your library at any time. So I can actually activate that because it is a look. Oh, look, uh, the top card is a beast. Okay, I get to do things with it because <laughs> I see it now. And I get to do, uh, and I get to cast that creature spell right off the bat. <laughs> Are you catching on now? Are you catching on now? <laughs> Uh, this one's from the, the latest, The Lost Caverns of Ixalan, Descendant's Path. Um, I was shocked to have seen this um, uh, um, this card, and I was like, yeah, that's perfect. Uh, two, uh, two mana in the green. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card that shares a creature type with a creature you control, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. 
If you don't cast it, put it on the bottom of your library. So this happens at the beginning of my um, upkeep. And basically, if I have um, you know the the chorus out, or if I have uh, if I have the cursor out, um, if I have the cursor out or Grook's uh, horde out, um, I'll know ahead of time. Although I won't be able to stop um, at the stop. Um, I don't think I could stop the descendant's path. This is not a you may because it's a, a tr it's a trigger. Yeah, this is a trigger because it's got at in it. This is now this is a trigger ability because it has at at the beginning, so I can't avoid it. But one thing's for sure, it'll scare the living crap out of uh, <laughs> my out of um, my opponents. That not only do I reveal, but they see what's coming, and there may be nothing they could do about it. Um, now remember, it, the, this is a cast, which means it can't be countered. Um, even though it's free, it's still a cast, so it can still be countered. So be very careful when you're going up against blue decks. Um, next up is Abundance. Uh, if you would draw a card, you may instead choose land or non-land and reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a card of the chosen kind. Uh, put that card into your hand and put all of the cards revealed this way on the bottom of your library in any order. So this is actually a very tricky one to do um, because I will have the cards revealed uh, and it's still a you may so it's not mandatory which is good. So let's say some of the cards I got that lets me draw a card um, uh, that, um, that lets me draw a card right? Uh, I do that. If I happen to have a land, if I see that my land card is revealed um, from Grook's Uprising uh, or the Cursor of Crufix, um, I don't have to go through this whole process. I'll be like, oh, look, I revealed the land. I play it. <laughs> Never have to worry about the, um, you know, have to, you know, go through all this. It's still actually a pretty good card, though, especially um, to, to fetch a land. Actually, because again, the cards go to the bottom of the de of the library. But if you want that quick, easy land drop, um, uh, abundant, you know, the abundance combo is really good. Uh, next up is Evolutionary Leap, a classic. Uh, this is the Time Spiral version. Uh, Evolutionary Leap, uh, which is uh, one mana and a green. Uh, if you tap for green, and sacrifice a creature. So that's instant speed. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card and put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of, the, of your library in any random order. So being that this is a cost, uh, if I have Cursor, uh, cursor of Crufix or um, or uh, um, Grook's Uprising or any similar cards like that um, out in the field, I don't have to go through all that um, milling, um, through all that, well, can't really call it milling, um, that method <laughs> of drawing the cards. Oh look, uh, there's a beast on top here. I'll just evolutionary leap and put that to my hand. Free card draw. Free card draw. Then we got um, Call of the Wild. A uh, very classic card. Uh, costs two, uh, two mana and two green to cast. Uh, its effect is instant, so it's instant speed. Two mana and two green. Reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it into your, into play. Otherwise, you uh, put it into your library, uh, into your graveyard. So that's not actually um, a problem. Uh, if Cursor of Crufix or um, Grook's Uprising are out there, because I don't have to. Because again, it's a cost, so I don't have to activate it. It's not, you know, against my will or anything. So if I see that creature up there for four mana, I can. Uh, <laughs> put it into play so it effectively reduces the cost on a lot of my um, beasts all those high costing beasts I only have to pay for and put it out in the field because with cursor crew fix or groups uprising out um, I'll know um, if it's out um, if it's uh, at the top I'm, uh, oh look I revealed it <laughs> even though it's already revealed plop free uh, <laughs> you know saying four mana drop easy um, this one I just added in because um, I couldn't think of any other um, enchantments uh, that could help out with, but this one is actually pretty good. Uh, it's, this is pretty good for uh, for for this deck for three uh, three green and a for three mana and a green. Uh, Sporal Genesis. During your upkeep, you may put a fungus counter on target non-token creature. Whenever a creature with a fungus counter on it is put into a graveyard, put a sapperling token into play for each of those fungus counters. Treat these tokens as 1-1 one, one green creatures. When Spiral Genesis leaves play, you remove all the fungus counters on uh, from all creatures that are on the field. So, 
with evolutionary leap. Uh, if I, uh, as long as I keep putting the fungus counter on these things and get as many as I can, I could do evolutionary leap. And even though I'll lose a creature, I'll still gain fungus creatures, one one fungus creatures, um, out into the field. Uh, and I could search for another creature with evolutionary leap. So if this, uh, so if Spirogenesis was out with evolutionary leap, it helps with, um, alleviate that hard, um, that really hard drawback of losing creatures, along with any other card that sacrifices creatures. Spirogenesis um, helps compensate the, the pay. So it's like, okay, I'm gonna lose this beast, sure. You know what, I'll lose the beast, but I've got myself uh, four, four one one creatures along with another beast I'm gonna draw out from Evolutionary Leap. So it's not bad. I feel that's a good um, compensation uh, to offset um, the high cost of losing a very important beast. Next up is Gaia's Anthem. This is a new one that um, that, I, um, that I found and scooped it up. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. So um, it's a uh, cost one and two green to cast. Uh, so if I have Spiral Genesis, they'll become two, two uh, sp uh, um, um, creatures. Two, two creatures. Not bad. And this helps out um, very cheap to cast, uh, to cast and helps out my creatures. Give them boosts. Uh, Brontotherium. Brontotherium is an cha uh, enchantment aura. Uh, two mana and a green. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a growth counter on momentum. A chanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each growth counter on momentum. So, yeah, it's pretty scary if put on um, uh, put on a beast because they're just, every single turn they're just going to get plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. Plus one. Uh, it'll get out of control for players. And it'll do, it'll do you good. <laughs> But be careful, it is an aura, so it will go to the graveyard uh, if you lose the creature. Hydra's Growth, uh, two mana and a green. Uh, enchantment aura, enchant creature. When Hydra's Growth enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on enchanted creature. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, double the number of plus one, plus one counters on enchanted creature. So again, uh, like momentum, this thing escalates uh, if left unchecked. And it will be very frightening if it's put on the right type of beast. <laughs> you don't. The uh, players do not want to see that. Um, mana boosting, uh, classic wild growth. Uh, whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, its controller adds green to his or her mana pool. Very old card, um, as you can see here. Uh, nowadays it just says tap, add green to your mana pool. Uh, overgrowth from the stronghold days. Uh, enchantment aura, uh, when you enchant the land, Whenever enchanted land is tapped for mana, it produces an additional two green. So not just only am I getting one green, I get three green because it's additional. Uh, two mana and a green to cast. Very good uh, mana boosting thing. Instance, respite for uh, one mana and a green. Creatures deal no combat damage each turn, and I gain life for each attacking creature. Oh, you happen to have uh, um, uh, 20... Uh, 20 one, one tokens that you're gonna sling at me uh, and they all have flying oh okay I have respite I get 20 life back and your flyers can do nothing uh, again uh, cannot bypass my unreachable <laughs> beast <laughs> fog another classic uh, this is the mirage version uh, one green uh, creatures deal no uh, combat damage this turn very straightforward. Uh, very straightforward. Uh, naturalize the disenchant of green. Very simple. One uh, one man in the green. Destroy target artifact or creature. Wear away the other um, disenchant of green for two green mana. Uh, destroy target artifact or creature uh, or enchantment. Uh, splice onto arcane as an effect that I don't really care for. It's a very terrible effect. It doesn't, you know, it's, I think it's down, uh, it's on a 10 on the storm scale. Um, I learned about the storm scale. <laughs> so, uh, Spice on Tilo King is never gonna show up in any future sets. It's very, very weird. Um, for three, uh, for three mana in the green, it says here, as you play an arcane spell, you may reveal this card from your hand and play it splice, uh, pay it splice cost. If you do add this card's effect to that spell, um, I don't know. I guess it's to bypass the stack, it, the original intent. But um, yeah, it's not very good. It's not a very good effect. Nature's lore for one mana and a green. Uh, search your library for a forest card and put that card into play. Untapped. Always, uh, always pay attention. This uh, this card brings uh, brings out untapped, much like the wood elves, and then shuffle the library um, afterwards. 
Um, every every deck that uses green should uh, should uh, have nature's lore. Um, having rampant growth is uh, is excellent. Uh, Kadama's reach is excellent. But if you have a nature's lore, uh, uh, fit that in your green deck because anytime you could put uh, land untapped helps you out. It will help you out because you have access to mana, especially if you have one costing mana. Migration path, uh, three uh, three mana in the green. Search your library uh, library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield. Tap then shuffle. Uh, cycling two, so you pay two and discard a card and you draw a card. So I have options. It's very flexible. I could either um, this is actually pretty good. Uh, it's very flexible. I could either uh, search for two lands if I need it, or if I need that card draw on top deck, um, I could cycle it out. I would prefer to get the mana though. With Commander, mana is hard to get. Uh, of course, the, uh, the uh, everyone's favorite staple, Kadama's Reach. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Reveal those cards. Put one onto the battlefield tap, the other into your hand. Oh, you haven't played your land per turn? Oh, then I put two out. One uh, untapped and one tapped. Uh, two mana and a green to cast. Next up is Fungal Rebirth. Two mana and a green to cast. Uh, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. If a creature died this uh, turn, uh, create two one one green sapperling creature tokens. So let's say I do evolutionary leap. Okay, let's say I do evolutionary leap. Uh, I only need one creature, so I do evolutionary leap. <laughs> I search and I get my uh, creature with evolutionary leap. Play fungal rebirth. I return that sacrifice creature back to my hand, and since that creature died that turn, I get a sapperling token. Uh, on hand so not only do I get to retrieve my creature but I get another beast and I get a free creature drop <laughs> oh excuse me um, maniacal laugh <laughs> coughing on a maniacal laugh it's a pretty nasty combination <coughs> next up next up Nature's Spiral, a uh, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. Um, it's funny how they give you the uh, reminder text here. A permanent card is an artifact, creature, enchantment, land, or planeswalker card. Very bad. <laughs> Very interesting that, um, to see that type of flavor text on here. Uh, reminder text. Uh, one mana and a green to cast. Uh, so, got card retrievals going here. Uh, if they end up in the graveyard. Uh, Season of Renewal, t uh, two mana and a uh, green from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Uh, choose one or both. So I could do both if I wanted to. Return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, and return target enchantment card from your graveyard to, to your hand. Oh, I lost my creature and my enchantment? Oh, okay, I'll bring them both back. With Season of Renewal. Artifacts. Uh, Nibiru's disc for the only creature wipe I have, the only board wipe I got. Uh, Nibiru the disc enters the battlefield tap. Uh, one mana on the tap, I destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. Um, green is very, very, very tough when it comes to creature wipe. Um, yeah, it's very tough on the creature wipe. So having Nibiru stick uh, disc at least uh, at least one helps out. Mana rock, three and dynamo, four mana. Uh, tap and add three colors mana to your mana pool. Very straightforward. Uh, good to help cover the high cost generic manas of the beasts. Uh, Urza's Incubator, three mana. When Urza's Incubator comes into play, choose a creature, beast. Uh, creature spells of the chosen type cause two less to play. So my beast spells uh, will reduce by two, um, which is very, very helpful. Next up is Brass Herald. Um, uh, I was up in the air, but I figured what the heck. Six mana. Uh, as Brass Herald comes into play, choose a creature type, Beast. Uh, when Brass Herald comes into play, reveal the top four cards of your library. Put all creature cards of the chosen type revealed this way into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library. Oh, I got four beasts. What luck did I draw here? And I take all four beasts in my hand. And creatures of the chosen type get plus one plus one, so all my beasts get plus one plus one. Alongside with put Gaia's um, uh, Uprising. Ugh, I forgot the name now. Um, guys, Anthem, uh, yeah, you're dealing with, uh, plus two, plus two <laughs> beasts coming your way. <laughs> that gets separling tokens. <laughs> uh, spore, uh, spore tokens. Oh my gosh. It's a, it's a pretty cool thing here. Uh, Hedron Archive for mana. Uh, I tap for two mana. Pay two mana and a tap, sacrifice the archive, and I get to draw two cards instead of one. 
So that's a big help. Everyone's favorite, finally. Everyone's favorite staple, Sol Ring. One mana, tap for two mana. Two generic mana. So there we go. That is... <clears throat> That is Silvos Rogue Elemental, my command, my mono green commander deck. There we are. So, uh, what I'm trying to figure out here, because I happen to, um, as much as I like Silvos Rogue Elemental, I wanted to have a Beast Commander. Um, I decided I want a Beast Commander because I want to be able to take advantage of all the be uh, Beast benefits that's going on in there. Uh, Silvos is pretty awesome in every step of the way. I mean, you're talking about an 8-5 creature on 6 tap, and he gets to regenerate and trample. But then, uh, so I found this card as I was looking for a legendary beast, because I was going to replace uh, Silvos for it. And I came across this beast, Kahira the Orphan Guard. Uh, it's like, its color identity is green-white. I could tap for one uh, one mana, and I could either tap for, to tap for two greens, or two whites, or one green, one white, whatever combination of green and white. Uh, it's a cat beast. It's a 3 2 creature. It has vigilance. Each other creature you control that's a cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, or beast gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. This is very powerful and very cheap to cast. But it also has this extra little thing that um, everybody in uh, at the commander group uh, taught me. And that is Companion. Each creature card in your starting deck is a Cat, Elemental, Nightmare, Dinosaur, or Beast card. Uh, if this card is your chosen Companion, uh, you may cast it once from outside the game. So, yeah, I mean, this is pretty awesome. Um, I can still put it in there because it'll cover... Uh, well, I can't put it in because its color identity is, uh, is green-white. But if I make it a Legendary... Um, I could still keep Silvos, uh, hands down. I could still keep Silvos, but because uh, because it, it'll get the boost for for being elemental. But um, yeah, um, I wanted this to be a beast deck, a mono green beast deck, and I could still treat this as a mono be a green beast deck. Um, you know, get remove uh, replace Silvos with uh, Kihira, and since I have all beasts, um, it'll still work out and just pay two green uh, as long as Kihira is my commander. Um, I've been. I was very tempted though to make this uh, a green and white deck because uh, I happened to went out of my way and find um, and went through my um, green pile and white pile. This is all of my green, and this is all of my um, beasts, dinosaurs, elementals, and dinosaurs that I got. And here's white. <laughs> this is what the tur this is white <laughs> uh, as you can see there's not a lot and this is uh, and this is primarily cat um, cat kind uh, one beast and a couple of dinosaurs because most of the white dinosaurs are in my dinosaur deck uh, they're in my pantlaza deck so um, so I can't really dual color it but the other reason why I don't want to dual color it is because I already have a green and white deck, and that's Sithis. And I've been noticing uh, with all of my deck commander builds that um, white has been paired up with pretty much every color. Um, Ryu's uh, Storm Edge, which is under construction, is my white and red uh, samurai deck. Um, I have uh, uh, Sithis, which is white and green, Shodokai, which is white and blue, and Amalia um, uh, Benavides Aguirre, uh, she's uh, white black so I'm just not interested in making another white green especially since uh, I got white paired up with all the other four colors along with being in the rainbow decks uh, the first sliver and Sisse. <laughs> so yeah it seems white truly is my strongest color um, alongside green <laughs> I got that many resources <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm very conflicted because the advantage of having Kahira is because I got, you know, you know, character, you know, cat creatures like Phantom Tiger, um, Stalking Tiger, which are cat types, Springing Tiger, which uh, has Threshold. Um, the Panther Warriors are good because they got 6-3. Uh, Nintendo Lion won't be a, won't see play because it's got a, a blue identity. So um, that's not going to work. Uh, forest walking cat warriors for two two. Tend the library's got blue. 
Um, what else? King Cheetah, which has Flash, uh, three uh, for three in the tap. So you see what I'm saying? It's like I got some pretty good um, cats in green. Then of course I got Force of Nature, which I probably won't play because uh, I'm not gonna take eight damage uh, unless I pay four. I mean, if I if I'm good with the mana, maybe. If I were to dual color it and put in the healing cards um, from white, eight damage would mean nothing. But uh, I don't want to do white and green again. Is the point I'm saying. But I'm also sad because I won't be able to get to take advantage of um, some of these cards here. Uh, yeah, see, like uh, Phantom Tiger comes into play with two plus one plus one counters. If damage would be dealt to Phantom Tiger, prevent that damage. Uh, remove uh, a plus one plus one counter from Phantom Tiger. But um, see, it, sa it says one zero. But if I have cards like um, uh, like Guy's Anthem, then it's gonna have that plus one and keep it out in the field, so I can really spam um, spam out the the counters with no problem. Uh, cat Warriors. Then I got Sabretooth Mauler here, another cat. Uh, at the beginning of your uh, of your end step, if a creature died this turn, put a plus one plus one a counter on uh, the Mauler and untap it. Oh, beginning of my end step, sorry. The beginning of my end step. So again, it works with the evolutionary leap, you know what I'm saying, uh, which I can get it back. And then, of course, I got the dinosaurs, the green ones, like the Frillback, the um, Oraska Frillback, um, the Thrashing Brontodon. Uh, so, so I got some good ones. Colossal Dreadma, 6-6 six, six, uh, Trampler, very excellent card. The uh, Ferdant, Sunza Avatar, um, and oh, and these are the rest of my beasts here that I separated. See, like I got Bognar, but I already have plenty of beasts going on in there. Here's some more dinosaurs like Curious Altosaur. Um, here's the Mist Leopard, which has Shroud. Um, I didn't do a good job sorting this out. <laughs> uh, Thundering Spine Bag, Shifting um, Ceratops, because I got multiple copies of the of the dinosaurs, so. The dinosaurs that, that I needed in my Pantlaza deck is in the Pantlaza deck. And I got these multiple copies, so, you know, uh, it helps out a bit. Uh, Runic Armasaur. Uh, let, me, let me push down here further. Uh, dinosaur Egg, Behemoth. <laughs> um, ornery Dilophosaur. Man, I got a lot of dinosaurs here. I got a lot of dinosaurs. I mean, I could do a Dinosaur Beast deck. Here's the Elementals. Um, I got, uh, here we go. Soul of the Harvest here. Here's, uh, whenever another token, not token creature, enters the battlefield under your control, may draw a card. Very excellent uh, card drawing uh, thing. Um, scrounging uh, Bandar. It's a cat monkey. <laughs> it's a cat monkey. It gets plus two, uh, two plus one plus one counters. Um, and I can move any number of two of the plus one plus one counters. So again, if I have Guy's Anthem, um, the one one will keep uh, the Bandar out. And I could just move the counters without any with impunity, no problem. Here's another elemental, uh, Fertilite, which comes in with uh, plus one plus one counters. And again, I can uh, remove a counter and target player searches the library for a basic land card and put it onto the field tap, which will be me, of course. So I'll, yeah, I would spend the two counters, and with Gaia's Anthem, it stays out. Uh, here's another elemental, Forgotten Ancient. Uh, players cast a spell, uh, put a plus one plus one counter at the beginning of up upkeep. You may move any uh, number of plus one plus one counters from ancient uh, from the ancient to the other to other creatures. So I got some pretty decent cards here. Uh, Bramble creature gets uh, attacks gets plus five plus zero. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Well, that's most of it. But the point I'm saying is is that it's very tempting if I do uh, um, because I do want to put Kihira and uh, replace um, Silvos as the as a thing, only because of the fact that my beast can uh, have vigilance and plus one plus one, um, and that's what's uh, that's what makes it very enticing. It's only a three mana tap compared to Silvos, who's a six mana tap, um, and that makes it even scarier because the command attacks will mean nothing uh, to Kahira, uh, to Kahira, and um, yeah. <laughs> So, it, um, but I do get to have the legendary cat beast that I'm looking for. In fact, let's move, um, let's go into Scryfall. Because as, um, as I've shown, um, this is a trick deck. 
the the point is that with my um that I play with, uh with my top card of the library face up, um it's face up, and then I'm able to use card um with cards like uh, groups uprising, or cursor of crucifix. Let me um not um groups uprising groups horde. Let me just make sure I can get the correct phrasing for when I uh, scry fall here. Uh, and the whole point is uh, is that because these uh, beasts are so high costing, uh, the idea is to use cards uh, like Evolutionary Leap, well not Evolutionary Leap, cards like Call of the Wild. Evolutionary Leap helps me um, um, fetch uh, creatures quickly. But the point is to have um, the point is is to try to reduce the cost on uh, of these beast creatures because we're talking you know six eight I mean this is very high costing and to make matters worse uh, it exposes me to creature wipes worse than that land wipes any type of board wipe so I need to be able to um, uh, bypass the the heavy the t the top heavy cost of the beasts so. As you can see here, this says play with the top card of your library revealed. So let's head on over to uh, Scryfall. Uh, let's go to the view screen. So here's Scryfall. Let me put uh, Garuk's Horde up. All right. I'm going to make this very fast uh, on the search here. Um, Garuk's Horde. OK. All right. Now let's copy paste this. Play with the top card of your library revealed. So I only have two cards that does this, and that is Garuk's Horde and and um, the other one. <laughs> uh, there we go. All right, and set this to green, and let's search. So these are the two cards that I'm looking for. Uh, oh yeah, Cursor of Crucifix. So. I got, uh, so I have Guru Sword and Cursor of Crucifix. The other two cards I'm looking for are the Mudaya cards, the Mudaya Channel Channelers and Oracle of Mudaya, where I'm allowed to play with the top card my library revealed. Uh, so this is good redundancy. I need these four for redundancy purposes um, in order to make this work. Because these two cards in a 100 card deck, um, the probability and statistics of um, you know, getting those two cards out out of ninety nine cards is extraordinarily difficult. No amount of um, card searching that Rowan and Evolutionary Leap can do uh, will ever get these to get Groove's Horde and Cursor Crucifix out. But if I get Moldaya um, Channelers and Oracle of Moldaya, uh, that's a uh, that's four cards, which uh, theoretically, uh, probability statistics wise, that's uh, one out of every. 25 one out of every 25 cards one out of every 25 cards I'll get one of these three um, and I'll be able to uh, play with the the, the, uh, the top card revealed and not only that but I get to play cards right off the top like in the case of uh, cursor crucifix and, and Oracle Modaya I could I could play library uh, play lands right off the top of the library um, let's see here uh, creature cards for um, Garuk's Horde. And what does this one uh, do here? Uh, as long as the top card of your library is a creature card, Muldai Channelers get plus three, plus three. So Muldai Channelers gets a, becomes a 5-5 five, five creature, which is a great chance to do attacking. And as long as the top card of my library is a land card, Muldai Channelers has a uh, tap two of any one color. So that's actually pretty impressive. Um, I could have a 5-5 five, five Trampler or a, a Mana Dork, depending on what's sitting at the top. Uh, but nevertheless, the point is to get that uh, play additional um, uh, play with the the cards revealed. Uh, I play with the library, the top card, of the library revealed. So that way, cards like Rowan, Evolutionary Leap will be cheap cost. Um, will be cheap for me to play. Or if I need lands, I can be able to do um, cards like Abundance or uh, Rowan uh, to help out and not have to uh, stress, you know, struggle with it. It won't become a, a struggle session. A session. I think this. Um, I, yeah, these are like the only four cards that have this precise wording on here. I don't know if there's any other um, on the green. Did I? Um, I never picked creature. So yeah. Uh, if any more but of those type of cards pop up, um, where I could play with the top card reveal, um, they're definitely gonna go in. Hence why um, 
Hence why, well, I'm also not going to pick di- put dinosaurs in there because um, the other creature types like dinosaurs and cats because I got Urza's uh, Incubator and other cards where I name a uh, creature card and that creature's card um, be a lot easier if I just say beast. So it's no biggie. Uh, it's not a big deal. Um, what else? Um, uh, what else do I need to find? Um, oh yes, let's take a look at legendary um, uh, beasts. Let's look at legendary beasts. Let me pull that up. Um, maybe if I type beast, that'll help. Bessa. <laughs> there we go. Uh, legendary beast, green. Let me see if there's any. Oh. Oh, right. Um, I got to remove that text there. There we go. Sorry about that. There we go. Yeah, the only two legendary beasts um, that are mono green is Questing Beast and Anar Volvid Familiar. I doubt I'm ever going to find those cards. And I was lucky enough to have gotten Kahira. Um, as long as uh, it's your turn, commanders you control have indestructible. It's a partner. Um, you can have two commanders that both have partner. That's not going to be possible. Um is this a partner? No, it doesn't have partner. Questing Beast has uh, Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste. Uh, Questing Beast can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Uh, um, combat damage would be uh, dealt by creatures you control can't be prevented. That's not good. <laughs> Whenever Questing Beast deals combat damage to an opponent, deals that much damage to target Planeswalker, that player is good. Yeah, that's too situational. And Anara... Um, only helps the uh, commanders. So, yeah, green legendary creatures in mono green, which is only two of. Um, wow, I'm surprised. Um, I guess Kahira is going to end up being the one uh, to take over Silvos's spot. So, want to make this official? Let's make this official. Silvos deck. I mean, I could still play Silvos. <laughs> Maybe someday... Um, Someday, once I get um, this beast deck um, 100% uh, straightened out, um, you know, saying like I get get more and and I could be able to, you know, as it as it grows along the way, I might be able to fit all those dinosaurs and make a dinosaur beast deck. Um, I don't need the cats really. I mean, the cats are fine, but um, dinosaurs and beasts working together. Ooh, that's a nice little theme there. But um, and there probably some yeah. Yeah, Dinosaur and Beast, but we'll see what happens as time goes along. So let's go ahead and make this official. And bid Silvos. Silvos was my second commander. Isamaru um, Konda's Hound was my first. But um, because I want, but because Kahira's effect, uh, Kahira is cheaper to play and has, a, and has a benefit for my beasts for now. Uh, Silvos will now be downgraded from commander to uh, lieutenant. <laughs> it is officially. Um, now here's the crazy thing too. Um, if I um, if I get rid of the elves, on the contrary, on the contrary, if I were to um, get rid of the elves, right? If I get rid of all the elves and I just put in the dinosaurs, I can use the command um, the companion uh, effect. Because the only way companion will work is um, if my entire deck consists only of cat, elemental, nightmare, dinosaur, and beast cards. I can't have any other creature type in there. That's uh, that was what was explained to me. So if I were to ju- replace all the um, if I were to replace all the elves with dinosaurs, and it's possible because I have plenty enough dinosaurs. Um, then I can uh, make Kahira the companion and keep Silvos as the commander. Um, and I could be able to play it uh, um, uh, off the whole thing. The re- and the reason why, um, if I understand correctly, that it's, it's the correct thing is because it's not in the deck. This doesn't go in the deck. Companions sit outside the deck like that. Um, they're the 101st card. As per the rules, so the so the one hundred card uh, is still um, Silvos and everything else in here. The companion sits outside of the deck entire. It's outside the field. It's outside the whole thing. It never goes in the deck. So this is your one hundred first card, and I could put uh, and I can add this to my hand by paying three mana. Uh, and when I do, I can throw. Uh, I could pay the cost of one and three green. 
uh, for Kahira, and I could play that out there. But that's only if I choose to get rid of all the elves and put in the dinosaurs. Then I can have Kahira and Silvos together. And probably throw in a few elementals. It'll take some uh, extra um, alterations, like I'll have to get rid of Urza's Incubator because Incubator is focused for mono decks. Um, and there's going to be a whole bunch of other creatures there. But I don't have to really give up Silvos altogether. I can still do Kahira, but I gotta be willing to drop the elves. Um, and the elves are very good. I mean, we're talking mana dorks and everything. So I'll have to see. I'll have to see as time goes along. But the, the, the best thing the best thing I should do for now is play this. Alright? Um, I can still play with Kahira, but just play this and first and foremost Oh no, right. No. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, wait, I forgot. No, I forgot. I can't play um, Muldaya and Cursa. I can't play those two if I companion the uh, Kahira. I forgot. Because remember what I said. Um, no other creature other than... Um, no other creature other than uh, Cat, Elemental, Nightmare, Dinosaur, and Beast um, can, may, um, uh, can be put in the deck when using... Uh, I'm so disappointed. <laughs> it's very disappointing. Uh, it's very disappointing. But I can still make a hero the commander and still put uh, the dinosaurs if I want. And the elementals if I want. I mean, I'm still not losing anything. Oh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, the important thing is is that I get Modaya, the two Modaya cards, and get them in there. And then start, um, start uh, operating the deck. And then uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, if I do Kahira, I'm not gonna lose uh, Rogue, uh, Rogue Element, so it's just gonna have to, I just have to get rid of a couple of cards that specifically say choose a creature. Um, I just realized, wow, what optics. Um, this is funny, if you're looking at the screen, uh, my Silvos Rogue Elemental card looks larger than my Kahira card. That is such an awesome optical illusion. <laughs> Let's leave it like that. <laughs> Look how tiny my Kahira card looks. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, that's pretty awesome. I think that's a sign. <laughs> Um, so let's leave it at that. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's my walkthrough of Silvos, um, the latest update. Um, if you, um, you can catch the older one, uh, it's very, very old, um, uh, on YouTube. Uh, if you want to see the, the, um, the previous Silvos deck, uh, it's, uh, I did it together with, uh, with the old Sil uh, Sithis deck. Um, so yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh two more two more walkthroughs to go um so where was i at um so yeah um so i just want to make sure uh i make it very clear for um, those of you on youtube um if you if you made it this far <laughs> um this is gonna be on, uh, put on hiatus because uh, my writing channel. I gotta do some scheduling, uh, mumble jumbo stuff um, uh, for my writing channel. Uh, I started up a Patreon for my writing channel. Uh, eventually, I'll expand outward. Um, you know, if you're if you like uh, if you like manga, and interested in seeing me read manga, you know you could head on over to Patreon if you want. It's an invitation. It's not mandatory. It's not an obligation or anything. Um, but that's the reason why this is going to be put on hiatus um, after next week. Uh, I figure I'd tell you all now. Um, but it's coming back. And it's coming back with the, uh, with a walkthrough of my Ryu Storms, uh, Storm's Edge deck. That's my um, um, newest commander that I'm working on. And I want to do a walkthrough of that. And then see what I can do with, um, with my uh, 10 commander decks in terms of... Um, you know, like analysis, uh, mana curve, and that kind of stuff. Next week, we'll, uh, the next show will be Am uh, Amalia Benavidez Aguirre. Um, it's under construction. It's going to go through its first uh, playthrough um, uh, this week. And then next week, I'm going to cover it, uh, do a walkthrough of it. Um, so 
So please understand. Um, I just need to get my scheduling in order, get everything in place, and get a routine going, and then I'll be back into um, into this. So this is not a, a farewell. It's not a goodbye or anything. You know what I'm saying? It's not going away forever. Um, it's gonna uh, it's gonna continue. You know, okay. And of course, uh, um, uh, with the tabletop channel here at Freelance Gamer, um, there's the occasional look at other tabletop games and maybe jump in um, some tabletop video games. Uh, on uh, Switch or Steam, uh, wherever else I got it, uh, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, comment, like, subscribe uh, down below, um, your thoughts on this deck, uh, any ideas, um, what you think of it, you know, and so on. And um, thank you all. Thank you all for joining me. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, Amalia is next. Uh, my Amalia Commander is next. So I look forward to seeing you all then. Uh, and until then, I wish you all a good night, a buenas noches, and hoy se me